Chicago, created in 1833. Population of approximately 2.719 million people. Known for its dip each pizza and style of hot dog. Hosted the Great World Fair in 1893. Home to Al Capone, Hillary Clinton, Harrison Ford, Robin Williams, and Michelle Obama. Over 40 million people visit Chicago every year. Chicago is the origin of the Ferris wheel, 16-inch softball, and the Yard Institute. Home of the first planetarium and skyscraper. Home of the first female African-American U.S. Senator. In African Americans' fight for equality, they have been forced to accept rights that were less than those of whites. In Major League Baseball, players were picked not because of their skill, but because of their race. When African Americans were banned from professional baseball, Rube Foster Jr., along with the African American community, founded the Negro Leagues in 1920, and they became the cornerstone of African American society. The leagues caused whites to realize that African Americans are not that different which triggered desegregation of many things like the MLB in 1947. The Negro Leagues also helped and inspired people like Martin Luther King Jr. to desegregate America. Baseball provided African Americans with opportunities to break racial stereotypes that were provided by racial beliefs of that time. ever since they came to America on crowded playgrounds and books. They've been excluded from almost everything, including bathrooms, restaurants, and sports. Baseball was not one of these sports. In the mid-1840s to the early 1860s, baseball was recreational. People got together and played scrimmage games. There weren't official rules, so there were many variations of the game. After the Civil War in 1865, baseball's popularity increased dramatically. Sudden boost in popularity produced the need of an organized league, a set of rules, and a set of teams to play in the league. In 1867, the National Association of Baseball Players was formed, and along with it, the major leagues. According to Negro League History 101, the National Association of Baseball Players formed a gentleman's agreement that banned all African American athletes from participating in Major League Baseball, starting in 1868. This crushed the dreams of many young African-American baseball players, but this didn't stop everyone. There were many African-Americans playing alongside whites in minor leagues and a couple with major league teams. These players who fought so hard to play alongside whites inspired thousands of young African-Americans to follow their dreams, but it was all destined to end in 1890. 1890, there happened to be no African Americans in several of the largest minor league associations, as well as the major leagues. The white baseball team owners took advantage of this opportunity and decided to stop drafting African Americans into white baseball leagues. But Andrew Rube Foster and other ambitious men took a stand and created the first Negro baseball leagues. They made their own league filled with African American players trying to avoid the racism of whites at the time. In 1920, Foster set the wheels in motion to create the Negro National League, an association of African-American teams modeled after Major League Baseball. Rube Foster also inspired people to create new leagues, such as the Eastern Colored League in 1923. There were people coming from all around the country to see these. Lines were long, stadiums were packed, fans were cheering. Since at the time, most of the wealthy people in America were white, the leagues were not as well funded and did not have official stadiums. They had to wait for the white team to be out of town to use their stadium, and even some of the rules were a bit different. The first Negro League World Series, for example, was played to nine games. Other rule differences included the legal legality of spitballs and the hesitation pitch but African Americans still love the idea of the Negro Leagues. Most people had enough money to go to about one game a week, and Sundays became a popular day to go to baseball games. These games became a primary spoke in the current wheel of African American community activities and a centerpiece of social life, says Derek C. Jones. African Americans thought of it as something that was created just for them and could distract them from the racism of the time.
What was your involvement in the Negro League? I played for Kansas City Monarchs before I went in the Army. I missed that. It's like that experience playing for the, playing in the Ma Negro League. What was that experience like? It was a wonderful experience, you know, riding on the bus and stopping and eating peanut butter and sardines, and you know, just guys playing their hearts and their guitars. It was a wonderful kind of experience. And Buck O'Neill was the manager. We'd just get into small towns, get out, change clothes, go play the game, get back on the bus, ride to another town. It's very, very wonderful for me. I really liked that so much. So when I signed with the Chicago Cubs, I didn't want to come to the Cubs. My friend Sherwood Brewer said, man, you're going to the major leagues. That's where you want to be. You've got all these great players, and you're, just, you're going to go to Wrigley Field. You're going to be playing with Ralph Kinner. He named all these people. I said, I don't know them. Well, you will when you get there. They're nice people. He gave me $10 and a ticket and I came to Chicago. I really enjoyed being with the Monarchs. I'm a type of person that I really enjoy my own comfort area. And I like being with the guys. I like their attitude. We cared about each other. And I was being taken out of that and going to a new dimension. And it was a big adjustment, although I came with another black player named Gene Baker. He and I came together. I didn't know him. He didn't know me. But we connected when we joined the Cubs and we became real good friends. Did he come out of Negro Baseball League too? Uh, yeah, I played Negro. Several African-American players with amazing talent were not recognized for their baseball expertise. For example, Ron Kroikick said that there was little doubt Gibson and other Negro League stars were good enough to excel in the majors. These players not only entertained the community, they broke the barrier between the two leagues, and while doing so, it broke the barrier between many other racial differences of the time. Josh Gibson was a major influence to the younger generations and was nicknamed the Black Babe Ruth. He did many impressive things, including playing in two leagues in one se season and hitting 350 in his career. In 1925, Rube Foster's packed schedule from his work for the Negro Leagues caused him to have two nervous breakdowns. He had to stop working and lived in a mental hospital until his death in 1930. The absence of a great leader like Rube Foster caused the Negro Leagues to go downhill dramatically. As if the leagues weren't having enough trouble already, the Great Depression had started in 1929. Nobody had enough money to buy tickets, causing the prices to lower, and eventually the Negro National League fell apart. Once African Americans came back from World War II and they fought, risked their lives, watched brothers, family die right in front of them. They came back and they wanted their freedom. I mean, they said that they were going off to war to fight for America's freedom, yet when they get back, they don't have it. The first and probably the most influential African-American player to play in the MLB was the great Jackie Robinson. Jackie Robinson became the first African-American to play in the major leagues in 1947 when he signed with the Brooklyn Dodgers. This was a very controversial move, and Robinson had to deal with tons of racist comments and even death threats, but no one could deny his skill level. In his rookie year, he got 175 hits and led the league in stolen bases with 29. Also in that year, he won the Rookie of the Year award, as well as being ranked number five overall in the league. His, in his career, he led the Brooklyn Dodgers to six World Series and in 1949 won the MVP award, meaning he was the best player in the league. But those were not even his biggest achievements. He inspired African American baseball players who never thought they would make it to the major leagues a chance. He made it normal for teams to sign baseball players of all races, not just white. He created a new era of baseball where all races were equal and with practice anyone can make the major leagues. Other Negro League players were signed in the years after Jackie Robinson's arrival and because of the integration of African Americans into the MLB there was no need of the Negro Leagues. The Negro Baseball Leagues provided support for a vital portion of the African American society. It pushed the Civil Rights Movement in a positive direction and was a major step for all of America. Even though the last remaining leagues vanished in 1950, their legacy and influence will never die.